a little early morning protection from my pet mosquitoes. Getting ready to start the mold for the center console, so I printed a couple of pictures off the internet, and they vary greatly. This one's 33 inches tall. This one's four foot four and three quarters inches tall. And this one is a little less than 48. It looks like maybe 42 or something like that. It's a lot of, that's a lot of variance. Um, I like the idea of having somewhere to put my foot, but I want the side to be straight because I want to put rod holders and I think this would impede on that. So either I can put an indention into the front or maybe I can put some sort of flip down deal. Um, other than that, I like this surface up here to mount the gauges flush. That seems to be the newest way to do it. And instead of, like on this one, you'd have to mount them on top. They'd have to be freestanding. That's a little more junky. Um, I want a door on the side or on the back to get to the gauges because getting to them from underneath, that's just crazy. <laughs> And what else? I don't know. I'm going to start putting this thing together. Probably be some changes along the way. Picked up these two things this morning. Probably to the untrained eye. They look like uh, old ping pong tables. But this is really form material for the new center console. Which I'm going to make out of fiberglass inside a, I guess that would be a female form. So I was able to get two sides out of the first half of the what looks to be a ping pong table, but it's not really. And basically the measurements are all kind of an average of these three photos. Um, I didn't really copy any one. I kind of like this simple shape. Um, I did make it wide enough so that it would sit on the stringers because I have a pretty wide gap between the two center stringers and the boat. Um, so now I'm going to cut out a back panel from this big piece. I'm putting the access door on the side and I wanted it big. So here it is. I drilled a hole in each corner. So now I just need to connect the dots. Try to keep the line straight. Stay between lines like in grade school. I spent some time trying to get these cuts perfect so I would have a nice looking opening for the door and really none of this mattered because what determines the door size is the little pieces of trim that I added after the fact what could possibly go wrong here i don't i don't know well it's been a long day but we did good today uh ever since i saw this uh ping pong tabletop in the trash this morning on my little run i went back and got it and I really should be glassing stringers, but I don't have glass, so uh, cut this thing out and put it together. Okay, this is the end panel that's not on there, and it this is the door opening, and this will be basically the door jam. The glass will come up and over, and then the door will be from the other side and close in. I made it the door jam is three quarters of an inch set back. Um, probably the door won't be that thick, but it will let me have some uh, room for a gasket or something. Or maybe the door lip will be that big, I'm not sure. But anyway, I, um, I've got some bondo on this. I've got some bondo on this inside curve. It'll be dry by tomorrow. I'm sand it up good. And then I'll have to wax the bejeebies out of it so the uh, polyester doesn't stick. And then I'll put the side on and my, well, I think I might go ahead and glass this before I put it on in because it's going to be hard to get around that corner. So I may glass this first, just keep the glass back from the corner, try to build up a quarter inch or so. Then I'll put the side on and then I'll glass that part under the dashboard before I put the front on just because access is going to be so hard. And once I get that part all glassed up, then I'll put the front on and glass these big areas. And I'm going to incorporate a lot of the uh, fiberglass I have left over from the cutty cabin I cut up to brace these walls so I don't have to lay up a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch of glass. I'm going to use those uh, pieces that I have to strengthen this thing up.
and try to save on some glass and some polyester. Picked up a new trick on YouTube this morning. Um, this is oil-based clay. It doesn't dry out and crack like water-based clay. And I'm trying to make a nice curve, smooth chamfer into molds so that when, we, when I do the glass, it'll come out with a nice shape. So it basically does what a tongue depressor does. It makes a nice curve, but because it's steel, you can push on it really, really hard and it's not gonna break. And two, because it's round, it really doesn't matter which angle you hold it at. It's gonna make the nice same curve whether you're pushing it, pulling it, it's just awesome. So we got the end panel cleaned up. I got the uh, fillet all the way around. I sprayed it with a couple of coats of gray primer that I happen to have, and that's to seal that that um, particle board. Well, it's not even particle board. It's just press board a little bit. And then I waxed it with some Johnson's paste wax, and then I sprayed a lot of Polytech mold release. I'm hoping the fiberglass won't stick to it. But if it does, we'll just deal with that. I've cut up some random chop mat. That's all the woven roving I have left. And I cut up some six ounce uh, fabric. And I'm going to apply all this and then let the heat go away. And I have some uh, biaxial um, combo mat, some good stuff. I'll make that the second layer. And then we'll go ahead and put the box together and get to the inside part. Baby powder is a wonder drug for minimizing the itching from the fiberglass. I was going to film, but as soon as I started, I had a sticky hand, so I didn't want to touch the camera. But I have uh, a layer of 6-ounce uh, fabric, a layer of chopped strand, a layer of 6-ounce fabric, and a layer of chopped strand, and a little bit of uh, heavy fabric at the top, because I'm sure if I have a... Um, <clears throat> T-top, one of the brackets will be up top. Now I'm going to let this set, and I have some uh, biaxial, biaxial, I don't know how to pronounce it. I have some good stuff, it's a combo mat. I'll put two more layers of that on this corner, and then I'll call that good, and then I'll clean it up, and we'll install it. This is biaxial uh, bias combo mat. It's good stuff. It's thick. It holds a lot of resin, builds up quick. The heavy, um, it's kind of like a woven roven, but the heavy strands are at a 45 degrees both ways, so it bends around corners a lot easier. And it has the uh, chop mat built onto the back of it, which kind of keeps it from that aggravating fraying that the regular woven roving does. So I got some enough of this to do all my sharp corners because it's really hard to bend the 19 ounce woven roven around complicated shapes, but this stuff works like a dream. Nice little surprise this morning. I've been looking at this box up on a high shelf that said fiberglass on it for a long time and I had convinced myself that it was not fiberglass. But anyway, since I'm out of fiberglass and kind of desperate, I pulled the box down and sure enough it's got all kind of fiberglass in it. This is leftovers from my days of heavy construction. We built a lot of water and wastewater treatment plants and they like to use fiberglass duct work for air handling ducts because it doesn't corrode fiberglass handrail fiberglass grating a lot of fiberglass goes in these plants so i know that it came from work i don't really remember which job or how long it's been up in that box but it's got some uh, some different pieces of glass and this stuff here is real flexible super flexible but it drinks a lot of resin and this stuff is different it has um, fibers going both ways but they're not woven they're just laid absolutely flat and it's got some little scrim holding it together so it would wet out very very thin and probably very strong but uh, all I have is these little pieces but it definitely won't go around the corner so glad to find this stuff in the box that said fiberglass that I didn't think had fiberglass it will tide me over until my roll comes in I can get started on the um, console I'm going to glass the top first. I'm going to use two layers of chop mat. I'm going to use two layers of this new stuff I found. I'm going to put another layer of chop mat and then I'm going to weight this piece of glass down on top of it for my strength. This came from the old boat and I got it uh, carved up so it'll stick good and this will be the side that 
<clears throat> face up. And then I might, if I'm doing well, go ahead and tab this all in. I'm going to have a problem when I go to wreck this form or mold. It is not going to come off. Uh, when I did this door jam, I used some sealer and I used some wax and I used some other stuff and as soon as I started painting the resin on the uh, spray paint which was under the wax and under the release agent was melting or you know dissolving so it's gonna be tough but luckily this is that press board junk so I could probably just leave it out in the rain it would eventually fall off but it's gonna take some sanding to get it off this is not a gel coat finish, this is a sand and paint finish, so we're going to make do. It's going to work. Then we'll cut out this rectangle. This will be the stiffener for where the steering wheel and the shifter goes on the other part of the console. I've been using these super cheap Chinese roller pads. I mean, they're really cheap. They don't hold a whole lot of resin, and the little fuzz falls off of them sometimes. But for all these little bitty jobs where I use a roller for five minutes and then throw it away, they're just perfect for this. Um, I'm getting to bigger areas like a deck or something. I'm gonna get a real roller, but uh, these these have been working. And apparently, everybody bought up all the chemical respirators in town for the coronavirus. I haven't seen anybody wearing them on the street, but there's none around. So to keep from getting asphyxiated with this um, polyester resin, which has a super strong smell, I've got every fan in the shop on and I have a box fan blowing right in my face to try to give me some fresh air in this little hole. Um, and it's not bad. The first two layers I'm putting in here is uh, with chop strand mat. It's called CSM. It's basically lots of little fiberglass fibers, kind of short, maybe an inch long, all kind, of, all kind of random different directions. And they're glued together in like a matrix. And it's uh, the glue just gets dissolved by the styrene that's in the polyester resin. So you put this stuff down and you get all these weird corners and it's not going to fold and you're thinking this is not going to work. But after a minute or two, the glue dissolves and then you just have a bunch of fibers and it will go anywhere. So using CSM as a first coat which is pretty standard it uh it will bridge little imperfections it'll fill little hollows it's just and it'll hold a lot of, of resin that helps uh, heavier layers of cloth uh, to wet out easily. Now this stuff this soft stuff that I found in that box it wets out really easy I love this stuff but I have a limited supply and I really don't know the strength properties of it I'm using it in this um, <clears throat> console and all these little faces. I, I don't have an issue with it. I know it's going to be more than strong enough. So I put two layers of this just to build up some thickness, really. And then I put another layer of chop strand mat to, to hold some resin. And then I put a stiffener plate on it and weighed it down. And uh, this is how I'm proceeding with this uh, console box. So here I'm uh, cutting out the next stiffener plate for the next little surface I'm going to do. So other than the dust and the noise and the uh, itchiness, it's uh, no big deal. Uh, I am working right in front of a big box fan. That's that green object you see in the foreground, which blows all the dust away. Once it's uh, cut out, then I will um, taper the edges. I will scarify the surface that's going to be bonded. And I do that with the diamond wheel. I find it a whole lot quicker than trying to grind off all the um, gel coat. There's no reason to do that. And that's about it. So I've got the top part glassed and I got the face glassed. And this side is the doorway. It's glassed. So this morning I want to glass the back and this side just up at the top part. And then I actually want to cut the mold, the form off, open it up, and see what I got. Because if it doesn't work, if it, I don't want to go any farther. And I can't really tell how thick my corners are until I open it up and take a look at it. So There are three YouTube channels that really offer a lot of instruction on working with polyesters and epoxies. That's a Sail Life, 
Life on the Hulls, and Boat Works Today. All three of those guys are knowledgeable, they're perfectionists, they're, they just do everything right. Um, so if you want to learn about fiberglass, check those channels out. I'm, I'm not a perfectionist. If you've seen any of my videos, you figure that out. I'm a make-do kind of guy. But we're building a console and using probably all the wrong materials, all the wrong separators, and with the exception of the fiberglass pulling off the black paint from the ping pong table, which I don't quite understand because it was on the back side of the um, boiled linseed oil, came off okay. So happy with this stuff. We'll proceed and finish it up. Adding one more piece of the mold and I'll glass this before I move forward with the next piece. I'm just trying to um, work with this polyester resin without sticking my head up in an enclosed box. It's pretty uh, aromatic. I'm trying to save the few brain cells that I have left. This is the front of the um, console. This is the front. And I glassed it this morning and I used the Venicel as a stiffener. Um, it'll work just fine. It won't hold a screw or a bolt as good as my used boat parts. But this is the front. There shouldn't be anything on the front mounted to the front except maybe a cushion. So I went with the foam and it's you know it's attached now, so I need to put more glass over the top. Uh, Theoretically the same amount on the back as on the front, which should be no problem And then I got one more side and then I have to find a top for it or a front So this morning I glued this side on I had to turn the stiffener plate gelcoed out just because the shape I had to work with and I put a angle on this side And I just glued the angle on this side. I'm going to try to screw it from the inside of the console instead of the outside and now I'm going to put this last piece of press board on the top. I found another piece of press board. I like that better than plywood because if it does stick, it's easy to demolish. And turn it over and tomorrow I should finish the majority of the glassing. I can take it out to mold and start hours and hours and hours of sanding. Getting ready to lay glass on the last surface. The surface is ready. Got my in, the embed angle is ready. I got my glass cut ahead of time, which is a necessity because if you try to cut this while you're working and you have sticky hands, that's just terrible. So, should be cutting this mold off in a couple hours. So, just finished the last surface. I put an extra layer of glass. I did not put a stiffener because I'm probably going to cut some big holes in here. I would like to have a big glove box. And I'm thinking about putting a toe, a toe rest in, inset into it. So can always add stiffeners later but I did ex add an extra layer of glass so I'm looking forward to having it cure in the next hour and start ripping this form off and see what it looks like it's probably gonna be ugly but it's gonna be strong I think so after the first piece I started using boiled linseed oil as a separator and it worked but it didn't work it worked if I put the resin on right after I put the bowl linseed oil on while it was still kind of shiny um, but some of these panels sat for a couple of days and then I did the poly 
um, then I did the plastic and I didn't recoat and they didn't work so hot they stuck pretty well the, w the way that front piece just popped off that was just a, a fluke because all the rest of the pieces are not coming off except for the um, that last piece it came off really easy so I'm doing a number on destroying the mold but that's okay I only need one console on this boat luckily the door jam side popped right off I'm gonna flip it over and try to get the back off and I'm gonna put it outside and put it in a hose because this stuff will turn into mud with enough water not the fiberglass but this old press board so here's my console out of the mold and structurally it looks awesome there's not a problem one it came out good um, I got to get all this cardboard stuff off of it I'm gonna cover it with a blanket and wet it and just let it sit and of course it needs to be finished but uh looks good to me man and it's strong the front has this different color and all this is, this is the natural color of the glass. Um, the difference being the separator worked so it didn't pull the paint off the ping pong table finish. So. Well, I got the console sleeping under some wet blankets for the next couple of days. Um, we're supposed to have a lot of rain this coming week from those storms. So this would be a good project to bring in the shop and clean up and do the um, surfacing while it's raining outside. In the meantime, I'm going to let it sit and I'm concentrating on glassing as many stringers as I can glass. And now I'm going to run out of um, resin. I bought 15 gallons. I'm on my last bucket. I'm going to have to go to New Orleans and get some more. So, thanks for watching.